Good morning everyone, this is update for May 31, 2022, day 97 of the war. Uh, today is going to be a fairly short update. We're just going to discuss uh, one general strategic topic and specifically Ukrainian and Russian negotiations and uh, attempts, at least declared attempts to solve this conflict through the through uh, through diplomacy. So today, Ukrainian president uh, mentioned that uh, he would like to have one-on-one -on -one meeting with Putin. Then uh, also the head of the upper chamber of the Russian parliament uh, mentioned that Russia is open to negotiation and, and solving the conflict through diplomacy, except she said that Ukraine is, has uh, um, does does not have constructive position whether you know let's let's it's unclear if it's just a lip service about this whole uh, diplomacy or or there is a, a real pressure there but based on now we'll look on the economy in Ra in russia it, there is definitely pressure building up inside of russia to to try to find solutions somehow to this situation uh, from our perspective even let's say there are negotiations, one-on-one -on -one negotiations between the two leaders, chances of finding common ground are extremely low because Russia essentially, for internal political reasons, cannot give up its uh, territorial gains in Ukraine and Ukrainian society, not so much even leadership. It's really about society. Society fights this war, not the leadership. In Ukrainian society does not accept uh, territorial losses of Ukraine. So, so that's where the problem lies uh, as a whole. And so this negotiation may kind of create a pause uh, in the war for a week or two, whatever time it might be, um, where both sides, actually both military, uh, military on both sides will use it to regroup, ref refit, replenish and so on. So that's what might be happening uh, in the next uh, week or so, maybe even more. We, it's hard to predict. But uh, so far, this is what it's looking like. Now let's actually switch to our works through the front line. Uh, we're going to start... Uh, from the very north and then you know go in a clockwise fashion <laughs> so again artillery shelling keeps going here on the border no changes uh, intensity doesn't seem to be increasing so we kind of feel it's more or less the same situation now let's uh, let's look what's going on uh, around Kharkiv there situation is sort of similar where Russian side tries to push a little bit Ukrainian side the tax to capture some villages so we we saw the uh, information that russian side attacked to um, capture a village called sasnivka but it's really basically from the big picture it, nothing is really happening it's attacks of the at most company size troops and it's all about like okay who's gonna have you know if russia gonna keep the buffer here or ukraine wants to really for propaganda, most of the purpose is actually to reclaim this whole um, uh, state uh, state border and just to show on TV. Okay, we 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 now sort of restored the territorial integrity of Ukraine in this area. So that's what really is going on here. So uh, let's uh, now let's go south. Let's look what's going on in uh, on the Zoom bridgehead and Leman bridgehead. So. Uh, this is the schematics of it. This is essentially uh, Russian uh, mechanized brigades here that are uh, actually at this point they really on defensive here. And then uh, those these are units here that pushing that trying to destroy this Leman bridgehead. And most of these units were transferred uh, actually to help in the area of Popasna. So uh, let's look what's going on as we discussed. This Leman bridgehead is is completely uh, uh, destroyed Ukrainian troops evacuated so it's all in full control of Russian of Russian troops at this point now they switched they would like to uh, wipe out this bridgehead around Svetohirsk so that today they captured village Yarova so basically right now this bridgehead really got squeezed to essentially very small 
uh, area, just the town of Svetohirsk, and it's a really small town. And then this village is nowhere. That's essentially it. And then the only place where Russian troops trying to attack again, they keep they keep attacking in this area, sort of straight uh, from from village Pasika towards south, but uh, no success. So situation is essentially stable here. No essential uh, changes, except obviously this is going to be, in our opinion, lost in whatever time, two, three days, maybe a week. Really depends uh, on the ability of Ukrainian troops to defend here. But it's basically delaying tactic here from Ukrainian side. Now let's uh, let's keep going. Let's look at what's going on at Severodonetsk salient and Papasna area, because that used that's where the most intense fighting has been going on. So on the northern shoulder of the um, Severodonetsk salient, it's uh, quiet as it's been since early May. Uh, there were quite a bit of development in Severodonetsk today. Essentially, Ukrainian troops almost uh, lost all of the town. And and we believe that there might be this night that when they really evacuating and basically uh, lose and the Ukrainian side is going to lose Severodonetsk probably tomorrow, in, in, in our opinion. <laughs> Let's actually look a little bit at how it was kind of the whole situation was transpiring. So this was on May 29th when the Russian troops initially got like small foothold here. Then they quickly expanded it, captured essentially, let's say, half of the town, more or less, because this is industrial zone here, right? That's what we, we said. There is a huge in the, uh, chemical industrial complex here. So uh, and then uh, today, essentially, Ukrainian troops were squeezed out completely out of the town itself. And there is some sort of sporadic fighting uh, going on uh, at this industrial uh, complex. Uh, and so essentially this is sort of rear guard fighting and um, a slow retreat of Ukrainian troops. There is There was no fierce fighting in general. There was no fierce fighting here in Severodonetsk. There was some fighting, but for most part, Ukrainian troops really didn't, didn't fight hard here in general. And this is the pass of the retreat, essentially. This is the only bridge that's still left and it's still available. <laughs> uh, so this is basically pass of retreat here. This bridge was blown by the Russian artillery a while ago. So that was the only essentially feeding um, uh, feeding artery for these troops here. Uh, in terms of actually... We have some little bit more information. We mentioned before many times that the Western Bank is much higher. Let's actually go back to the bigger picture here. So Western Bank of the Siversky Donetsk is much higher than the than the Eastern one. So in, in terms of actual specific numbers, so the difference between the two is about 120 to 150 meters. So basically the Western bank is about 120 to 150 meters above the uh, eastern bank so you you can imagine there is pretty good visibility it's very uh, good position for um, to use artillery as a main defense tool obviously if ukraine has enough of it uh, so that's the situation here so we believe that probably tomorrow ukrainian ukrainian troops will fully evacuate maybe even this night we don't know but essentially it's a question of very short time before ukraine will lose Severodonetsk. now let's um, let's go a little bit more south again there is fighting in this village of stenivka fighting um, straight like um, west of the village toshkivka which has been captured by uh, russian troops uh, some time ago then uh, you know sort of like a a reconnaissance attack here from the frontal side where Ukrainian defenses are the strongest. Uh, and then essentially no really changes here. Ukrainian uh, front line still holds. Uh, Russian troops trying to push Kamashavaha, but today they, there wasn't really intense fighting. There was just artillery shelling. Um, maybe the Russian side is also regrouping, refitting, and or trying to bring new fresh troops. We don't know. At this point, it's we don't think there is much left in in sort of Russian arsenal in terms of the units in, in terms of manpower that's sort of available to push here. But we'll see. We could be surprised. Now this is uh, now let's 
let's actually look this is more closer look uh, nothing has changed since yesterday and it's actually I believe like four days since the front line essentially stabilized in this whole area and there's not really much changes uh, this is the sort of bigger picture about to looking at the whole sort of like this mm, sort of Popasna salient and then this kind of wedge that the Wagner mercenaries were created here. Again, everything is uh, stable here, no really changes. Uh, Russian troops still trying to attack here from kind of like a rear because this, you know, most of the Ukrainian troops here. So there is probably not much on this side, just kind of screening troops. But nevertheless, uh, Russian side is also not able to get through those tr uh, sort of screening troops because they probably also have uh, screening troops here themselves. So it's kind of like a, it's been quiet section of front line and this one as well. This whole thing has been very quiet except for you know, re recent developments for about like a week ago or so when the Russian, uh, when Wagner, uh, Wagner group basically managed to sort of capture this whole area by attacking Ukrainian forces from the flank and from the rear and forcing withdrawal. Um, this is, uh, so now let's look what's going on straight west of Donetsk. Again, uh, some pressure here, some, you know, attempts to, to kind of, you know, build out this salient, but they were not successful. Uh, attempts to attack here from, uh, from Pisky. Uh, again, attempts to capture New York, uh, <laughs> village New York. <laughs> Uh, and um, but beyond that, but they were not successful essentially. So it's it does feel like that overall Russian army is has is regrouping and in a large scale. Uh, that's because it's it's being relatively you know only weak attacks, uh, not really much of like strong pressure anywhere. So this is a closer look at this attempt to. Uh, to create uh, uh, encirclement of Ukrainian troops around Avdivka. So again, this is what Russian troops managed to capture at the beginning of May. Uh, they haven't managed to move further. Then they try to attack here from this area around uh, village Pisky from Donetsk International Airport, which has been destroyed a while ago. And <laughs> they tried to attack north, but no success here either. So now let's look at the Zaporizhia front line. Situation there is is essentially the same. It's all quiet here in this wedge area. Um, the whole front line is essentially just artillery shelling. There's really not even much to report here. Um, now let's look what's going on at the Kherson bridgehead where there we, we have seen some action two days ago and it's actually been sounds like a pretty quiet uh, neither side is reporting anything it's uh, super like sort of non-informative about this whole situation uh, all we know is that <clears throat> the Ukrainian troops the way Ukrainian troops actually managed to do this um, um, breakthrough is that actually they established pontoon bridge south of the Vidiv breed basically so they kind of attack like this and forced withdrawal of Russian troops from the Vidiv breed. So this is how that kind of like came about. So they kind of attacked from here, then they went here and essentially Russian troops were forced to kind of withdraw. We don't know where they are and where the actual Russian front line here is at this point. All we know there is front line here, kind of like a blocking, um, blocking position. And there is uh, basically airstrikes, artillery uh, strikes at Ukrainian positions here, but um, the pontoon bridge still intact. Um, so, and at the same time, it sounds like this this whole push is on pause on from Ukrainian side as well. Uh, we think it's more because there is not enough really resources. Uh, there is not enough ability to cover f uh, from air attacks, even though there there it's better right now, but. You know, if, if this is really a big threat, Russian Russian side will not, you know, will, will throw anything they have in, in their disposal to stop this push towards uh, towards this uh, channel. So, <clears throat> so for that reason, and there's not really enough resources in terms of uh, 
you know equipment and, and and everything else on ukrainian side here so i think this is probably will be for a while kind of like a s- small rich head that will be step you know that ukrainian troops will have here and unless russian side finds resources to destroy it it's probably going to remain here for some time uh, it doesn't feel that russian side has resources to actually counterattack here or at enough resources to do a successful counterattack because they did small counterattack at the beginning when they tried to kind of cut it off from you know from both sides and basically encircle ukrainian troops here uh they were not successful so so th- this this feels that there is not simply not enough russian troops to sort of um to destroy this bridgehead Uh, So, so that's it for today. Thanks for watching and until tomorrow. Bye bye.